Todos los días por la mañana tu recuerdo solo viene y va, viene y va. Morning, everybody. How are we doing today? Happy New Year. Y'all want to stand to your feet and sing with us? Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand. When everything around me is shaken, well, I've never been more glad that I put
Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. He's never let me down. He's faithful through generations. So why would He fail now? He won't. He won't. Thank you that you're with us no matter what life throws at us. Rain came and went, blew, my house was built on you. Now I'm safe with you, I want to make it through. Oh, rain came. on you and I'm safe with you I'm gonna make it through oh I'm gonna make it through cause I'm standing strong on you oh I'm gonna make it through is my firm foundation the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaking and I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus cause he's never let me down So why would he fail now? He won't. He won't. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't. I'll sing he won't. He won't, he won't fail, he won't fail, no, he won't. Amen. All my life. 
come before you today, God, with whatever we walked in here with, be it blessings or, or sorrow or joy or troubles, God, you know what is in this room today, God. You're the healer, you're the provider, you're the comforter, you're our friend. Help us to rest in that today. Help us to go into this new year with confidence, peace that you are able and you're there for us and you're there with us. We love you. Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall but you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Sing his promise. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. 
This is my confidence. You never failed me yet. And I know the night won't last. Your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again Jesus, you're still enough Keep me within your love Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I saw in your hands, this is my confidence. You never fail me. Yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your
thankful for that today. Amen. Y'all can have a seat. Glad you're here today. If it's your first time or you've been here a few times and you haven't got connected yet, you can scan uh, this QR code right here uh, with your phone. And that'll take you to the easiest way to get connected via our app and our website. Um, if you're not good with phones, you don't like phones, I feel you. We also have some cards out right by our entrance that you can grab, fill that out, and uh, we'll be in contact with you and get you connected. If you have an um, offering that you brought today, you can either give via this QR code or we have an offering box by our door as you leave today. And if you're a kiddo and you would like to follow the beautiful Miss Ashlyn right here, she'll be organizing our kids program today so they can jump up and follow her. She doesn't bite me, I promise. That includes you, Jude, right? <laughs> follow Miss Ashlyn for a great time at Kids Church. <laughs> there we go. All right, y'all pray with me, and then we're going to receive a message today. God, we thank you again for a new year. Thank you for bringing us all here today, God, safely. Um, God, in good health. With so many blessings, Lord, thank you that we're breathing, that we're alive, that we're here today, that we're in a free country. God, I ask that you would speak to us today, give Pastor John the words as he speak to us today, open our hearts, open our minds. It's in your name we pray, amen. Happy New Year. I know that's still going. Supposed to be some music with that, but um, it happens. How's everybody doing? Hadn't seen some of y'all since last year. Is that a new one? First time I ever said it. Good to see y'all. It's good to see y'all. Um, 2022 was a year to remember, but 2023 is going to be better. Always look at it like that. <clears throat> always look at it, um, you know, I think uh, Doug in one of his sermons last year, he talked about glass half full, glass half empty. Uh, that, that We're all in that category. I think our goal should be for our cup to run over, you know, and, and think positive, you know, like healing. I think sometimes we make ourselves sick. Amen. But we can also make ourselves well. You know, we can do all the holistic stuff and the, and the organic stuff. <laughs> you know, and that may work. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, McDonald's is now going organic. Did y'all hear that? So we'll see. We'll see how that works out. But anyway, good to see y'all. Good to see y'all. 2023 is here. It's upon us. It seems just like yesterday, it was 2022. Hey, that's a, that's a different one, David. That's a different one. New material. Every year, this happens. This happens. Every year, we do New Year's resolutions. Well, I had decided years ago that my New Year's resolution is to not have a New Year's resolution. That way, I could... Uh, Keep up with it. Who has ever done a New Year's resolution and kept it? Eli, you need to hit the altar. Oh, he did? Okay, he's got family proof because family tells the truth about each other all the time. Let me tell you, they're just so like, yes, he's the world's greatest. Only one that can say that is Jesus' parents. Eli, I'm messing with you, brother. But anyway, um, I, I decided, you know what, I'm not going to do New Year's resolutions. Ironically, uh, in my adult Bible study on Wednesday nights, I had uh, challenged ourselves, myself included, to start the year out right, to do a short, quiet time devotion. And I, I got this book. Some of y'all have it on y'all's apps. I got a few of these copies left if you want to join us. They're dated January 1st, January 2nd, et cetera, et cetera. 
and they're easy reads, one-page reads. Uh, this morning's was about, let me read y'all one of them. Let me read y'all a little excerpt from it, talking about New Year's resolutions. Blackaby just nails us right off the bat. As you begin a new year, you may be painfully aware that you have failed your Lord in many ways. <sighs> Ouch. That's not definitely a Joe Osteen comment. Perhaps you were not faithful. Perhaps you disobeyed his word to you. Perhaps you denied him by the way you live. Jesus will take you aside as he did Peter. He will not berate you. He will not humiliate you. He will not ask you to examine your love for him. He'll just simply ask, do you love me? And then we'll affirm that. So then he says, Jesus does not need your resolutions, your recommitments, or your promises to try harder this year. Kind of contradicts the whole resolution thing, huh? But I think we can still challenge ourselves each day to be better, to do things better. Uh, you can call this a resolution. I'm calling it a challenge for myself. And then since I'm saying it publicly and cyber world, I'm opening myself up to be accountable to you and to anybody else. Trust me, there's a lot of people I don't even know that hold me accountable. I don't agree with what you said. I'm like, I, I know. <laughs> it was in my notes, though, so I had to say it. I'm going to challenge myself to read, study, and pray more each day. Every single day, I'm going to do my best to read more than I'm already reading, study more than I'm already studying. They say, and Doug, you may have heard this before, Sean and Bible College, they say for every minute that you preach, you need an hour of preparation. That's convicting. That's convicting. I know a lot of guys that just do curriculum and look it over Sunday morning. But anyway, that's a different story. Commit to spiritual growth and maturity. I want that. I want to spiritually continue to grow and to mature. To be a better husband. Angie says, amen. To love my wife like Christ loved the church, that he gave himself for her. Oh, how our home lives and, and marriages and families would be so much better if us husbands would just do what we're supposed to do. And that's to love our wives like Christ loved the church. To be a better father. My kids will say amen. By the way, I got a Marine here this morning. You want to do a couple push-ups for us just to demonstrate your, where our tax dollars are going? No? No sit-ups? No, no face-ready moves? No, it's good to see my son. We almost didn't get him here at flight cancellations. And it wasn't through Southwest Airlines either. Poor Southwest. I, people were being interviewed. We're not ever flying Southwest again. I'm like, whatever. Get over it. There's, everybody cancels flights. People can just get crazy and get carried away. So I'm going to be a better father to encourage and challenge my kids. More encouraging. To be a better friend. I feel like I have a lot of friends. I just need to be a better one. Today, I have to be a better friend to a family in Mayfield who lost their baby yesterday. You know, uh, I said, hopefully y'all got a prayer request that got sent out. Uh, Peyton was in our youth group. I think she's a year younger than you, Brooke. Um, and they lost their baby. They've been having a lot of health complications. So I need to be a better friend to people like that. To be the best shepherd I can possibly be. And y'all said amen to that. To be a better steward. Steward my time. Steward my finances. Steward my time. Steward my finances. Because contrary to what you might think, we all have 24 hours in a day. We can agree on that, right? All of us have 24 hours in each day. Wow, we came here to learn about time. But we do. I always hear, well, I don't have time. I don't have time. I don't have time. No, you don't want to make time. You don't want to make time. You got time. We just got to manage it better. I'm talking to myself. These are my, my challenges to myself. And hopefully this will encourage you to challenge yourself. 
How am I to encourage and challenge you if I'm not challenging myself? First, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what it looks like to challenge myself instead of you hearing me say it. And I want you to challenge me. I remember when I was a youth pastor, I was a youth pastor for a couple, couple of months or so. And um, I would have the kids challenge me. Oh, and you, if you hold me accountable, oh, man, let me tell you, they love that part. Because they would be like, did you do your quiet time this morning? I'm like, look at this, man. I ain't raising challengers. I'm raising a bunch of Pharisees, raising a bunch of self-righteous people. A lot of times that's the truth. Because a lot of times we, we like doing the challenging, but we don't like to get challenged. We like to admonish. We don't like getting admonished. So I'm publicly telling you, I'm opening myself up to your admonishing and to your challenging and to your encouragement and to you holding me accountable. But guess what? When you do that, you have given me permission to do the same. Amen? Amen? So I'm willing to do it first, and then we'll reciprocate. Now nobody's going to challenge me. (laughs) Be like, "Uh uh-uh. New Year, same vision. New Year, same vision. 2023 is here. It's upon us. It's here. But I still have the same vision. I still have the same vision. Yeah, I want to get better in all these areas that I already told you and then some. But I, I'm, I have the same vision. I love doing stuff with homeless people. My brother over here, he's involved with homeless ministry. He won't let me join him. Because it's a secluded thing. So it's a, it's, I guess I blend in with the homeless or something. I, lo- I love it. Remember, we used to pass out warm clothing when it's cold. And a couple weeks ago, it was cold. And a lot of them suffered through the elements. They didn't have the option of bundling up in some, some secure home, even if the power was off. They didn't have that option. And so... You know, so for me, that, that, that stuff's gold to them, right, brother? That stuff's gold. I love being part of the schools and the community. Absolutely love it. I love being a part of things that uh, 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 we see people that we generally wouldn't see on Sunday mornings. You know, let's be real. Here's, here's an admonish. Sometimes the only people we see are the people we see on Sunday mornings. We go through life Monday through Friday. And this is our only spiritual time. This is it. That's not a good way to live. I, I call that spiritual anorexia. We're going to be anemic. And so th- there's, there's an admonish. I still desire to convert our metal building into food distribution center. North Texas Food Bank is ready to provide us the food. We just need to prep that facility. I'm in the works of getting it funded. I know I've told you all that before. I'm going to get it funded. I'm going to get it funded outside of church budget. For one, the finance team won't release those funds. That's okay. But outside, we're gonna, I'm going to have I'm gonna hand a check and say this is going to, we have to insulate that thing. We have to get a freezer, a cooler, some more shelving. We're going to do it. You know why? Because I like doing that. And you will too, I promise, especially the kids, especially the kids. When you see a need and they're handing out food or handing out warm clothes or raincoats or something, it's, it does something for the soul. I can't explain it, right, brother? I can't explain it. When we do stuff in service to others, there's something that just builds it up in us. So many other things, so many other things. We all have the potential to do amazing things. For the cause of Christ. I read a, I read a story once about a, a youth pastor. Actually, it was a video, like a video short documentary. And uh, they were talking about their youth pastor. Their youth pastor was a, a female. I know, women pastors. Let's go with it, okay? And there, all these kids, they're interviewing all these kids, scores of kids. Oh, our youth pastor's this, our youth pastor's that. She's amazing. She loves us. She's always with us. She's, you know, inviting. She's this, she's that, she's everything. And um, finally, we met the youth pastor in that little sermon clip. 
or that little video clip, and it was like a 76-year-old woman. I thought, that's amazing. That is amazing. That gave me hope because I was a youth pastor in my old age, Sean. Very old, but not quite 76. I thought, wow, that's awesome. Don't cut yourself short just because you think you're old, okay? I've, I'm 55. I know I don't look 55. But I, I'm, man, I love it when kids come in my office. I love it. Absolutely love it. The day that that stops happening, I'm going to become a senior adult pastor. Right, Doug? When that stops happening, that's when I need to move on to the, to the, to the, uh, the blue hairs. But so long as I can still have some kind of rapport with this generation, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So many of you, if not all of you, have the potential to do some amazing things in this little church. If you're visiting with us, we're a small church. We're a small church. But I don't know if if pound for pound you're going to find more gifted and talented musicians and singers than in our little church. I mean, we got 86 people up here on the stage, and a few of them ain't here today. I mean, it's crazy how talented we, we are. We just need to work on the sermons, but that's a different, different story. But we got some talented people in our little church. That's their part. They're doing their part. You can do your part. At times, we take a vision that God gives us. Run and run and run. I do this. I've done this. 2022 was a lesson for me. I ran with what I believed was a vision from God. I just didn't wait on his timing. Been there, done that? He gives you something. He gives you something. And and you run with it. But it wasn't his timing. And I'll get into a minute. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 11, a little bit in Acts chapter 1. We'll get into the text. This is my introduction for 2023. So the timing is off. Where our hearts are in the right place, but we don't wait for God's timing. A good friend shared that with me. Your vision's in the right place. I believe God is showing you a vision. He wants you to do this. He wants you to do that. He wants you to do a food distribution center. He wants you to do that. But the timing has to be right. It's got to be in God's timing. Maybe he doesn't want us to have the funding for the for the food distribution center, because they're about to chew up this road, and traffic is going to be horrible, and maybe it's just not a conducive place for that. I don't know. We'll find out. Other times, God gives us a vision, but because we lack faith, or we lack budget, or we lack courage, we don't execute. Wives, let me talk to you for a second. If your husband comes up to you and says, honey, God told me to quit my job. Right there, 98% of you are like, uh, no. Before, I mean, there ain't even, the sentence ain't even over. But I believe, I believe, Angie, if I told you right now, God told me to quit my job, what would you do? Straight up, negative, ghostwriter. Regardless if I said God told me, right? Negative. Negative. Wives, it's crazy, ain't it? But God gave this guy a vision, and and a lot of times people ain't going to go with it. Lack of faith, lack of courage, lack of budget. Sometimes we get stuck in our jobs, hello, and because we lack faith, we hate our jobs. 90% of Americans do not like their jobs. Ms. Alex, they they hate what they do. 90% of Americans chasing that almighty dollar. That's why they're buying lotto tickets. I'm not, by the way. You want to give me one? That's fine. That's different. I promise I'll tithe on it. By the way, that did happen under this roof that I wasn't aware of. But their hearts were in the right place, right? We didn't win. But it's, it's a lack of faith. It's a lack of courage. We're not going to do it. And, and spouses, ladies, you wouldn't, you wouldn't go with it. You wouldn't. And, and my wife is being honest. 
She said, negative Ghost Rider, and the pattern is full. It ain't happening. Even if I tell her, God told me. A lot of times we don't follow through. Many times we like to ask, but we forget to do our part. Seek and knock. Seeking is on us. Knocking is on us. Asking's in all, on us, but a lot of times we sit in our quiet rooms, sit in our quiet times, and we beg God, and we ask God, and we ask God, and God, why can't I have this? Why, God, why, why is it like this? My marriage is horrible. My kids are horrible. Things are falling apart. There's more month left in the, in, in, there's more month left than there is in the account. And we ask and ask and ask, but we don't do our part. We don't do the seeking and the knocking. We're taking that be still to another level. We're going to be still. I'm going to sit here. Hey, man, what are you going to do? Well, I'm going to be still. Come on, we don't want to be still too long, man, because you got to eat. You know, you got to eat. got to go get it, Robert. Go, go get it. Buy you some chickens. Raise you some goats. You got to get it. Go get it. It's out there. Man, let me tell you, don't get me fired up. I think a lot of us are like Cousin Eddie. Y'all know Cousin Eddie? Y'all know Cousin Eddie? I like that part where Clark Griswold's wife's cousin, Cousin Eddie, he doesn't have a job. And the reason he gives is, is hilarious, but it's where we're at. Do y'all remember what he said? He's holding, he's holding out for a management position. <laughs> Ain't that crazy? Oh, I'm not going to go look for a job. I just can't find a management, management position. That's the problem. I'm going to say it too. That's the problem with today's youth pastors. I can say it. I got a lot of youth pastor friends. You could probably say the same thing about worship pastors or deacons or, or kids ministers. You can say that. Teachers. Okay? I can say this. A lot of times, do you know why most youth pastors won't come here? Because it's not too flashy. They're 22, 23 years old, coming right out of Bible college. They want the glitz and the glamour. They want the avenue. They want the oaks. They don't want to put in the time. They don't want to sacrifice anything. They want that big salary, and all they've done is gotten a piece of paper. That's what's wrong. That is what's wrong. Do your time. Right, Sean? Do your time. Angie, do you remember those days, those early days? I remember I had to take a job as a, a seasonal overnight stalker at Walmart because we were so broke, we needed a co-signer to pay cash. You'll get that here in a minute. Brooke was bit, uh, little, maybe three, four years old. She would tell people, my daddy works at Walmart. It's like, hey, uh, mm -mm. let's chill on that. Well, daddy, it's cool. That, I love that place. I'm, yeah, but you need to chill. Okay, <laughs> but hey, you do what you got to do, right? To eat. We ate good, didn't we? Shoot. What's up? It contributed to my current situation, but that's another story. We got three choices to make when we're in the depths of our despair. Are you ready? Three choices. There's no other options. We can climb. We can sit. Or we can keep digging. Two out of the three ain't going to cut it. Two out of three ain't going to cut it. We got to climb. We got to scratch. We got to claw. When God gives us a vision, we got to figure out, okay, God, help me figure it out. Lead, guide, and direct my life. In all thy ways, I want to acknowledge you and you direct my paths. I don't know how you're going to do it, okay? We don't have the budget for this. We don't have the budget for that. I don't have the faith for this. I don't have the faith for that. But you're going to have to, God, you're going to have to make a way. You're going to have to reveal it. And you're going to have to show me some checks, preferably blank ones that are signed. Hello. Are you with me? 2023. This is what I'm talking about. I'm telling you. I'm not just telling you something. I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. I just had something cut out of me that I'm still having to deal with. But I'm not going to wallow in the mud. I've had, I've had our, our home health care nurses tell me that there is people younger than me 
that went through the same thing I just went through, and they're still bedridden two, three months later. I was ready two weeks later. Some, some people have to tell me, you need to chill, man, you need to chill. Sean, you told me a lot of times, dude, are you all right? You all right? Of course I'm all right. If I'm not all right, I'll sit down. You know, I, but I, I just can't, I can't, I don't have a, I don't have another throttle, man. The, the throttle's all the way down on that speedboat, and I'm going to go, man, fast as I can. It's not very fast these days, but as fast as I can, I'm going to do it. I want to do it. If God gives me a vision and you support me in my vision, we're going to do it. We're going to reach people for the cause of Christ because that is our ultimate goal. That is our ultimate goal. Why are there so many empty seats, not just in our church, but in other churches? Well, we're not fishing. We're not fishing. We're setting. We're not climbing. We're digging. Come on, man. Come on. This is, this is better than snuff, not near as dusty. If God gives you a vision, run with it. Many times people have amazing ideas for the church. Many. And then I say, well, go for it. And then they'll tell me, no, it's a suggestion. I'm like, hey, God didn't give me this suggestion. He gave it to you. He gave it to you. Now go run with it. Do it. You ain't got no budget, but go run with it. Before we unpack Genesis and Hebrews, we're going to talk about our good friend Noah. Very, very, perhaps outside of maybe Moses, uh, the Ten Commandments, all that stuff. Noah, probably one of the, the kids know who Noah is. He's dreaming about 2023. It's he's, he's getting a vision from God. You know I'm embarrassing you in cyber world, right? That's how we roll around here. But anyway, Noah, probably one of the top five, as far back as we can remember. Brooke, how old were you when you heard about Noah? Two? I mean, Noah's a very common, all right? But there's a lot of things about Noah that we need to talk about outside of just the ark and, and, and the animals, a lot of youth, uh, uh, a lot of churches will decorate their, their children's area with all the animals in the ark. And it's like, man, that's a smelly place. It goes along with it real good. It took construction workers 1,604 days, which is four years, four and a half months, to build the Golden Gate Bridge. 8,890 feet long or 1.7 miles long. That's a big bridge. It took, this, this was astonishing. It took one year and 45 days to build the Empire State Building. It stands 1,250 feet tall. One year and 45 days. In the 1930s or 20s. That's amazing. That's amazing. With that technology, which isn't really much different than now, except they had scaffolding. <laughs> really tall scaffolding. You know, it's like, uh-uh, not me. I'll help you on the first floor. You're on your own after that. <laughs> Side note, if you're having a house built or ever had a house built and it's taking forever, compare, tell them it took the Empire State Building one year and 45 days. Why is it taking you almost that? The church in Mayfield took about two years, two and a half years. Ain't nowhere near the size of the Empire State Building. Moving on, it took over 10 years to build the Panama Canal. Panama Canal considered one of the greatest infrastructure projects ever. The Panama Canal. Like I stated, the Panama Canal was built in the early 1900s with the Empire State Building and, and, and uh, the Golden Gate Bridge in the 1920s and 30s. For some of you theologians out there, Levi, how long did it take Noah to build the ark? You're right, 120 years. Good job, Levi. 120 years. I can tell you why it took him so long. David, he had no Mexicans with him. Come on. We built this city. <laughs> he didn't have no Mexicans. But anyway, 
Genesis chapter 6, right after Genesis 5 and verse 1. Father God, I thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your love. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the amazing things that you're going to do in this church, through this church, for the people of Red Oak and Ferris and Waxahachie and the surrounding areas. I thank you, Lord. Use us, Father. Lead, guide, and direct us. Let us launch 2023 as the best year ever that we've ever encountered. In Jesus' name, amen. When mankind began to multiply on the earth, daughters were born to them. The sons of God saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful, and they took any they chose as wives for themselves. And the Lord said, my spirit will not remain with mankind forever because they are corrupt. Their days will be 120 years. Then he goes into talking about the Nephilim. We can Bible study about that. Verse 5. When the, Lord, when the Lord saw that man's wickedness was widespread on the earth, nothing compared to what it is today, by the way. Or is it? And that every scheme his mind thought, that's talking about people, of was nothing but evil all the time. The Lord regretted, some translations say, uh, um, grieved. Actually, this translation says it later. That he made man on the earth, he was grieved in his heart. Then the Lord said, I will wipe off from the face of the earth mankind whom I created, together with the animals, creatures that crawl, and birds of the sky, for I regret or grieve that I made them. Noah, however, found favor in the sight of the Lord. I'm going to read verse 14. Watch this. Make yourself an ark of gopher wood. Make rooms in the ark. Cover it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to make it. This is amazing how God just gives us blueprints on how to do things. The ark will be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, and 45 feet high. You are to make a roof. Myron, you would appreciate this. I mean, he's going into detail here. Finishing the sides of the ark to within 18 inches of the roof. I don't think Noah had a measuring tape, but anyways, whatever. You are to put a door on the side of the ark. Remember that part. Make it with the lower, middle, and upper decks. Understand that I'm bringing a flood. He's telling Noah this. It's never rained before. Flood waters on the earth to destroy every creature under heaven with the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will die, but I will establish my covenant with you, Noah, and you will enter the ark with your sons, your wife, and your sons' wives. According to Abrahamic religions, Noah is regarded as the 10th and final patriarch of the pre-flood era. The story of Noah and the flood not only appears in the Hebrew Bible, but also in the Quran, the Muslim Bible, and the Baha'i writings, the Eastern religion, a prominent one there. So much evidence of the biblical flood to disregard it as religious folklore. You hear a lot of doubters out there. How is that possible? Man, there's just too much evidence that the flood didn't happen. You got you to gotta, you gotta show me proof. You got to show me more proof that it didn't happen because they're finding stuff that substantiates. They won't even let us excavate Mount Ararat because they, I know they, I know that they'll find the boat up there, just like the Bible said. The pre flood condition of Earth is believed to have been much higher concentration of oxygen. Even scientists don't argue that causing all li living things that breathe to live much longer and in some cases much larger. They have found fossilized trees and other animals that were dated to this era inexplicably. It talks about a water vapor canopy covered the Earth's atmosphere. Genesis 1-7, waters above the firmament. It talks about uh, this firmament. I've even heard some guys, I don't know if I agree with this, but some guys say that the purest form of gold is clear. And it is believed that the firmament was held up by a layer of clear, pure gold. I don't know. 
Ladies, you'd be like, I want some of that. A lot of gold. These conditions would have made the earth more tropical. No storm systems. Amen. Tornado alley. No rain. Not good for farmers, but it's whatever. The, uh, here's a good one. The average temperature, it is believed, would have been anywhere between 60 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Pre-flood. I don't know about you, but those are perfect conditions. No AC. God had created a perfect world for his creation, and his creation messed it up. It messed, it, we messed it up. Somebody said, well, we're not the ones that ate the fruit of the tree and disobeyed God during the days of Nephilim. I'm like, what do you think we're doing now? Okay. When I was five, six, eight, 40 years old, somebody told me not to do something. Guess what I'm going to do? Hey, don't eat from that fruit, Johnny boy. Don't eat the fruit off of that tree. It's like, I won't. What's the first thing? Come on, man, be honest. What's the first thing a little five-year-old is going to do? Levi, you're going to eat the fruit off that tree if somebody tells you not to. Let's be real. Let's be real. So somebody would have messed up if it wasn't Adam and Eve or if it wasn't the people in Nephilim. Somebody would have messed up. We know Noah messed up later, so he wasn't even perfect. We'll get into that some other time. Noah was given instructions, blueprints, to build an ark 450 feet long. I don't know about you, but that's about a football field and a half. 75 feet wide, 45 feet high. Oh, and you have a 120-year deadline. <laughs> now, I don't think God gave Noah a deadline, but he gave him a clue. He said their days are numbered. They got 120 years. He told them. So in a way, that was a deadline. But I'm like, man, if we were given a deadline like that, Myron, have you ever been given a deadline of 120 years? 120 days, maybe. But 120 years, it's crazy. Oh, and it's going to rain. My question would have been, uh, okay, God, but what is rain? It's never rained before. It's pre-flood condition. It's going to flood again. I don't know what rain is, so does it go with flood? We know that here, yes. Oh, and you need these materials, specific ones. Here's the dimensions. Here's the blueprints. Here's how I want you to do it. Here's the exact measurements. Oh, and all these animals, supplies, resources, they'll be, need to be included. You and your wife and your sons and their wives will will have their boarding passes. No mention of children, but let's be real. Can we be real for a minute, church? They're about to go on a cruise with no, with no excursions. Did I say it right? Excursions. No swimming with the dolphins, none of that. What else are they going to do? They're in that boat for a long time. Anyway, moving on, kids are like, what? Is this biology? Noah would have had to be viewed as a lunatic, lunatic, a crazy madman, a straight-up dummy. Surely he was the talk of the town. Surely his wife and his sons and their wives must have had their reservations. You think about it for a minute. You think about it. Honey, God told me to build a boat. It's going to take me a long time. The honeydews are off the list. I can tell you right now, if David came home and told Helen that, that ain't happening. Honeydews are coming first. Amen. Glory to God. In the highest. Come on, let's be real. Don't play. Some of y'all be that too. Don't make me start saying names. Some of you wives would be like, uh-uh, that ain't happening. Honeydew. No, you're going to honeydew what I tell you. I like I, like, I saw a video clip. Um, a, a married couple was getting counseling. And uh, the, the, the counselor asked the husband, hey, so does your wife tell you what to do? And she goes, tell him, honey, no. <laughs> Come on, let's be real. Do you think Noah's wife was any different? You think she was any different? You think his sons? My sons still question me. Some of the stupid stuff I come up with. 
I mean, come on, let's be real. Put yourself in their shoes. Honey, I'll be busy for the next 120 years. No honey dues. How are we going to pay for this? I don't know. I don't know. But God's going to give the increase. I don't know how, but he's going to have to give the increase. I'm not a carpenter. I'm not a construction worker. I'm not Mexican. I'm not any of those things. But I'm going to build this boat, and it's going to be big. It's going to be huge. It's going to be 450 feet long, 75 feet wide, 45 feet tall. The kitchen cabinets are going to have to wait. Was it approved? (laughs) That's a little jab there. A little jab. Sorry, guys. I just had to kind of... (laughs) Was it approved? You're about to build a boat way longer than a football field, wider and taller than any other structure ever built to date. Tower of Babel was post-flood. But Noah followed the directions of his maker because he knew he had the favor of God. He followed the vision in spite of all the doubters, all the haters. You think about it. What are you building? A boat. What's a boat? What's going to rain? What's rain? It's going to flood. What's a flood? Perhaps even at the dinner table, whispers, older son, man, dad's lost his mind. Hey, him. He crazy. I don't think he took his medication today. Oh, and he wants us to help him. Crazy. Can you imagine? Noah had to have known that the boat will preserve life. And any air-breathing organism, if not any air-breathing organism, will perish if they aren't on this boat when the waters come. I have heard many refer to the opening of the ark as the doorway of mercy. I wish I was that poetic. That doorway to that boat was open. Perhaps as soon as the outer structure was built and that ramp was put down, this giant, massive thing. Got to have some room for the elephants to come in and the giraffes. You can't be ducking. Had to have been this giant, massive door. So they call it the doorway of mercy. Noah would have had to have had multiple conversations in 120 years with people in the community about this project. Noah is believed to have been the first evangelist. The message would have been very, very simple. Hey, it's going to rain. Come on in. You ain't got no rain gear. Why? Because it's never rained before. Come on in. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 1. Now faith is the reality of what is hoped for. Faith. The proof of what is not seen. If we don't see it, we don't want it. We don't want to execute because we don't see it. There's no 401k plan with it. There's no vacation time with it. So if we don't see it, we may not execute it. For our ancestors ones God approval by it. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by God's command so that what is seen has been made from the things that are not visible. That's faith. That's faith. Verse 7. By faith, Noah, in spite of all the doubters, in spite of all the haters, in spite of people within his own family, by faith, Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen and motivated by godly Phil, built an ark to deliver his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Here we see Noah's obedience to God's plan, preaching deliverance to all who would listen. This is a fascinating comment, what I'm about to tell you. He had to have preached for 120 years. And outside of his family, no one ever got saved. No one ever got saved. No one, not one. He had to have been discouraged a time or two. Brother, you're involved in homeless ministry. I'm in in the ministry. I'm a minister and a proclaimer of the gospel. We haven't seen too many people get saved here, much less baptized. It's been a minute. 
So Noah had to have been discouraged year after year after year. It wasn't easy for his wife and his sons, and certainly not his daughters-in-laws. Surely they heard all the murmuring from the people about their lunatic father, lunatic husband. Noah had no clue about rain or boats or navigation or construction or blueprints. All he had was a vision and direction, regardless of the cost. And I'm not just talking monetary. I'm sure he had some friends that he lost. When that door of mercy shut, it was over. It's too late. Sealed. Regardless of the haters, regardless of the doubters, he had a vision from God and he was obedient. Somebody once said, I'd rather shoot for something and miss it than shoot for nothing and hit it. Can I say that again? I'd rather shoot for something and miss it than shoot for nothing and hit it. We're not going to know unless we try. And if it fails, then it wasn't from God, right? Or he's trying to teach us something. Or maybe we didn't have enough faith. Or maybe we didn't, we didn't pray enough. Or ask for more direction or guidance. And so we, we reach a point where it's like, okay, why did we fail? Why did it fail? Why did it mess up? Well, human aspect entered into the equation. The last words of Jesus before he ascended in Acts chapter 1. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. Paris, Red Oak. And in all Judea, Ellis County. And Samaria, Dallas and surrounding areas. Dallas is right there, friends. Right there. We're in a metropolis of about 5 million people. Yeah, we got churches everywhere. We got churches everywhere. But guess what? The vast majority of them ain't sitting in a church service this morning. They're in an RV somewhere. And that's okay for now. And to the end of the earth, the mission field, church, what is your vision? What is your passion? What's your calling? Do you know your calling? Do you know what you're gifted at? What is your part in the vision of this missional church? Because, ladies and gentlemen, if we're not a missional church, if we're not outreach and evangelism emphasis, then what are we doing? What are we doing? We're just gathering, patting each other on the back, having a meal every now and then, singing some Christian songs. Is that what we're doing? I don't know about you, but there's people a rock's throw away from this building that are dying without the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. The door of mercy for us right now is open. It's open. It's open. But when the, the eastern sky parts, and I believe this to have happened or going to happen, hasn't happened yet, because if it has, we in trouble. Hasn't happened yet. But the eastern sky is going to bust wide open. And he's going to call his church. They're going to meet him in the air. The dead in Christ first. And then he's going to, they're going to meet him in the air. The door of mercy for the vast majority of this planet, the vast majority of Ferris and Red Oak and Ellis County, the vast majority of Dallas-Fort Worth is going to stay here. There's people you work with. There's people you, 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 you kids are students with. Scores of them. They're going to wonder where you went. And if you're still here, you're going to wonder, why am I still here? Oh, that would be a horrible feeling. I'm like, where is, you know, I'd hate for Helen to be raptured and David still be stuck here with joy. <laughs> uh, does she watch? I hope she doesn't watch. I'm kidding, Joy. Love you, girl. I'm glad you uh, just went into the hospital for checkups and stuff. We're praying for you. She doesn't watch, does she? Oh, crap. It's been nice knowing y'all. These are simple questions, but some difficult ways to answer and answer. What is your apprehension? What holds you back? What keeps us or you from fulfilling God's plan for your life? Is it alcohol? 
Now I'm not a, you know I'm not a, I'm not a legalist. I believe in moderation. As a Baptist minister, I wasn't always that way. I grew up in the independent Baptist, fundamental, KJV only. Bless God. You're a sinner. Don't listen to secular music. Women have to wear culottes. Come on, what's up? Whoop, whoop, raise it. Women couldn't wear pants in the church. Guys couldn't have facial hair. Oh, that's the kind of church I grew up in. Come on. Don't even think of Budweiser. Don't even think about it. But in moderation, come on, man. Jesus made wine at the wedding reception. Come on. Let's be real. Some, some old school batters will tell me, but it wasn't fermented. I'm like, well, you're saying Jesus made some Kool-Aid, some punch? If, you're, if, if that's what you're saying, then fine. He made Kool-Aid and punch. I'm like, I don't know where the miracle is in that because, Sean, I can make Kool-Aid. I can make punch. There's an Alabama guy, defensive player named Kool-Aid. <laughs> I, I ain't making that up. Is it drugs? Oh, here's a good one. Maybe it's not alcohol. Maybe it's not drugs. Maybe it's prescription medication. Maybe it's pornography. Maybe it's a potential extramarital affair at the house, at the office, at the job. Please don't think for a second these aren't issues with people you know and love. The enemy is prowling, seeking whom he may devour. And men, we got to be careful. We got to be careful with all of these things. We got to continuously fight. It's a daily struggle. It's not a 2022 issue. It's not a 2020 issue. Oh, that's not a good year. Not any of that. But it is a 2023 issue because we constantly have to be battling our eyes, our thoughts, our mindset. And fellas, you're not that handsome. If some cutie tries to Move in, that's somebody from the pit of hell. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It keeps us from fulfilling our, our plan that God has for our life. It keeps us. The enemy is prowling. All the enemy needs to do is to discourage you, disqualify you, divide you. Pray with me, church. Pray with me. Pray with me. I don't want to just be status quo. I don't want to be status quo. I don't want to just exist in this community. It's never been, it's never been what we're about. Somebody says, well, you know, it's a small country church. There ain't a whole lot you can do. Come on, man. Come on. God took a man who was 600 years old, by the way. That's pretty old if you ask me. Free flood condition. He took a man. He found favor. He found favor in Noah. He found, he, I'm filled, this room is filled with people that God has favor over. And we're sitting there spinning wheels. Somebody said, hey, uh, uh, at least you got the gas, you got the, the pedal to the metal, you're putting the gas on. Some of us are in park, and the motor ain't even on. We're not even in neutral. We're not even spinning wheels. We don't even have our engine running. Because we choose to exist. I don't want to be that. I don't want that for you. That's not a good place to be. 2023 can be the most amazing year this body has ever witnessed. We just have to let him do his thing through us. Let him handle providing. Jehovah Jireh. Let him handle it. He can do it. He will handle the details. He'll give us some details, but he'll handle things that we cannot see. That's faith. He could have spoke that ark into existence. I thought about that. Could have. Spoke everything else into existence. Spoke the gopher wood into existence. Spoke man into existence. Spoke the animals into existence. If he were to ask me to build something like that, I would have been like that. God, why don't you just speak it? And it is so I'll navigate. I'll handle the, the wheel. I don't even think it had a wheel, did it? Didn't say. 
It was rudderless, directionless, but it didn't matter. God is going to guide it, just like he's going to guide this ship. Pray with me. Father God, I thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, Father. Thank you for 2023. Thank you for the air that we breathe. Thank you for the food that you provide us, the roof over our head, for the friends that we all have. I thank you, Father. I thank you that you're preparing us to be more missional, more outreach-oriented, more evangelistic. Father, we need to see kids and families get saved and baptized. Father, give us opportunities. And when you give us an opportunity, Father, give us the courage to talk about you to them. That's the remedy. That's the remedy. That's the cure. Jesus. That's that our, our door to doorway to mercy is right here. It's upon us. And Lord, I don't know when that doorway is going to shut. It could be tomorrow. It could be in 50 years. We don't know. But Lord, the times of Noah, the days of Nephilim, they're not too different than they are now. The only promise you said is you will never destroy the earth by water. And you made a covenant with the rainbow. But God, you see what they've done with that rainbow. They hijack everything. So Lord, I don't know if the times are different, any different than they were back then. The doorway is open. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Will you stand with me and sing? Kick off ain't till next Sunday.